Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. In this one, we'll be discussing the short seller investigation, UBS's warning of toxic swaps, the AMC dilution, and much more. Make sure to watch through to the end to see how these 308 billion synthetics are coming back to haunt the short sellers. All right, let's look at this news story about prosecutors raiding HSBC BMP Paribus offices in the context of a short selling investigation. Before we go any further, let me clarify that this is happening in South Korea, but I think this is a first step toward understanding what governments are doing currently when they observe um, entities when they see firms that are illegally shorting, conducting naked shorting, synthetic shorting, some, and many other things. The reason I say this is because of the CAT system that the SEC is implementing, and I believe that this will eventually expose all of the naked short sales of hedge funds and short sellers. Additionally, the cash system will be fully implemented in May, and it has already found how much synthetics has been created for AMC just in the options locate. Again, synthetics is something that is fairly common in the market, at least for AMC, and obviously any other stocks that are um, legally manipulated. Therefore, when the SEC and the regulations notice through the use of the CAT system that the synthetic issues have grown far larger than they initially anticipated, we already know that this is a massive situation. But the totality of the situation may be larger still given all the data that has been made available, and when the regulations notice that it's extremely well, they will undoubtedly take a crack at it. Once more, you can observe how the government is responding to you lawful. There are no short sales on this list. The best way to stop short selling and other types of trading is to put limits on them. Also, I believe that even though Americans are aware of the issues with short selling, they might not be too worried about small scale and individual buyers just yet. If it hurts though, I think they'll notice how short it is and worry. A Swiss bank called UBS said in its yearly report that a big mistake could be missed. This could cause a big mistake to show up on your credit record. Everything that has been said so far about UBS and Credit Switch is based on UBS's statement from February of last year that it was looking into significant deficiencies in Credit Suisse's internal controls for the years 2021 and 2022. It is very important that I understand this. What I do for the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission and how much it costs to live here. Credit's inspectors were worried that a big mistake in reporting CR numbers would mean there was a big mistake in the books as well. I'd like to talk about what I think about having debt. Because of the dangerous deals between AMC and GME, Switzerland is in this situation, and you have been linked to the audit firm PwC. They got paid for some of their assets by Swiss Um. To get more money for ongoing help or to reach some other goal could have been one of the reasons given. This will be related to our discussion about the dilution in a moment, but for now you guys understand that shorts are affected by AMC. We can see this with Citadel, and we can see this with Virtue with Citigroup. Two solutions to this problem are to finance the toxic swaps or to actually sell off the toxic swaps when the market can no longer handle IT dot, and now we're seeing this with UBS as well, and these are the exact data which gives us the signal that they are actually affected furthermore, and I think that this is probably what everyone's mind is on today, which is obviously the dilution of AMC and C, and so first we need to clarify is that what AMC did today was sell 250 mil. Tell the whole story they're building the CAS position to have a better liquidity ratio so they can refinance that debt, which is good now again. Everyone will have different feelings, different thoughts about, um, you know, this whole dilution thing. Comment down below what you guys think about this. But I just want to clarify that this is what it's for. And again, I want to talk about this as objectively as I can not being biased so in the middle and hopefully to let everyone know what my opinion is and have let you have an even better understanding. And so if you were to see articles that just... Talk about you know AMZ is failing because they're selling 250 million realize that what they're selling this for firstly let's talk about this now we got this from CoAdam who has in the past. I obviously talked about as I have said before cash as King has noted yum during our last earnings course AMC's focused on extending our debt maturities and ensuring that our cash reserves remains robust and so you know this isn't of a surprise when we see a dilution because again raising cash is. Something that objectively has been the goal for AMC, AMC's CEO and senior administrators have stated that they require further funding. They claim that having money will enable them to achieve their objectives, stay in business, and expand as a firm. However, this is not a shocking revelation. AMC has consistently stated that they will follow through on their commitments, so we know they will. What else, though, can we learn? Nothing is worth losing, and it's acceptable if things deteriorate for years. Allow me to explain the significance of this. First, and regrettably, filing for bankruptcy is the only choice. It's not necessary to lose everything in order to evaluate this from several angles. Those who made a hasty sale are still in trouble. Everyone agrees that the short sellers are trapped in this game. 
They have too many shorts to cover the 250 million stocks that are being sold, even if they can purchase them all. They may be able to cover part of the expense, but probably not all of it, so that we may reach a consensus and choose a course of action. There is a third instance in which hedge funds ought to file for bankruptcy rather than normal purchasers. It's critical to remember that M assured us that things will improve over time. We are prepared to go. Be cautious with your money at all times, and rest assured that this is not a fraud. Financial advice takes Sal's word for it, and make sure you conduct your own study and due diligence. In addition, we discussed earlier how to avoid bankruptcy by mentioning the UBS and UM report, as well as the brief probe. Firstly, understand is that we are already seeing short sellers to be struggling with holding on to the AMC short. We're already starting to see how UBS is already warning of these talk swaps. They are selling their assets off to finance these swaps, and so AMC and GNG MES affecting these short sellers. And we have always talked about this, that this is a tug of war that is either one side the retail investors give up, or the other side, the short sellers, the institution that give up, and again, the longer this drags out, the more likely it is for us to win. And so by AMC avoiding bankruptcy, we are obviously more likely to win. And I think that is very key, but also to talk about this, which is again, understanding that. We don't have the CAT system fully implemented yet. It's coming in May and again with the CAT system implemented. If we were able to now put more transparency in the market, allows us to understand how much exposure there is where the public, the SEC, the institutions, the regulations to actually take control, and you know put um, some limitations, some regulations on the short selling then that will also help us as well. But you can see with both the short selling investigation, with both the warning of possible errors, these are all things that again rely on one big factor, which is time and time, is something we have to understand, and just like what we talked about here, retail investors holding on to AMC shares have. All the time in the world again, unless you're in need of the money of the shares, if you just buy into this and you're leaving, you have all the time in the world. It doesn't cost you anything to obviously hold on to these shares again. It will obviously cost you money to buy in, but for the short. Sellers, first thing you have to understand is that it's costing them money every single day to finance. These shorts and every time they want to short more and again, create more synthetic shorts and naked shorts, they have to put even more money into this. And so as they goes by retail investors, doesn't spend any um, any money unless they want to buy shares, but short investors and short sellers is long. As they are holding on to these shorts, it doesn't matter if they're buying more, but they have to pay money every single day. And I think that's why having more time for AMC is a massive factor for us. You guys are going also see that when the 2026 debt is refinanced, lower interest payment as you can. See, AMC makes 34 million operating income. But interest expense is 411 million refinancing. It will lower that interest expense, making AMC profitable. And again, AMC being profitable is what I think will probably be the checkmate move. Because if AMC were to be profitable, firstly, it won't need any more dilution. It won't need any more cash offering or cash raising. And again, it'll probably do the opposite, which is actually buying back shares. But also by being unprofitable, you're obviously able to then continue to grow as a company, can continue and to operate as a company, which again is giving us more time, which allows us to win anyway, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.